Originally, I was gonna name this video as Stalgen 2 but not Sticky, but I doubt any new viewers would know what exactly Stalgen 2 is and why would they care if it's Sticky or not. To clear things up a bit, Stalgen 2 is basically the second generation of an AI model that can freely generate and synthesize faces that have never existed, and it was achieved simply through learning and training from a ton of real faces, with its complicated AI architecture of course. So this video you are seeing right now is just evaluating in random directions in a so-called latent space where all the learned data in the AI is generalized. And by moving through the latent space and evaluating as we move, we can see the changes of the faces being made, which produces this video of faces morphing continuously. And of course, this is one of the cooler ways to visualize human face image synthesis which Stalkin and Stalkin 2 performs. Although it can do amazing stuff like this, it doesn't mean that it is usually perfect. If you look closely at the video, we can see that textures are kind of like sticking onto your screen while morphing through different faces. And this simple sticking issue actually reveals a major issue about the Stalgen brothers. This issue not only breaks the illusion of a 3D subject, but it also destroys the coherency of a moving object. A more obvious example is that when objects move through an AI generated video, you can see that the textures and reflections are basically glued at a specific spot, ruining the realness when the object is being moved around. It creates an imbalanced sharpness when sticking to the same pixel coordinates, so the overall generation is uneven. Like how fine details do not change in a short time span, but structural change is more obvious. And this is also maybe why when we rotate the pose of a human face in the generation parameters, the textures of the hair may not change, only the major facial structures changes. And logically, the hair should move to the side. So this shows that it's not regenerating uniformly with other features which is bad and causes incoherency. This issue was identified and fixed by the same makers of Stalgen and Stalgen 2, which they then proposed a new improved paper called Called alias free GAN. GAN is the current most prominent AI architecture that is used for synthesizing and generating images and videos, but why alias free? It was because they found out it's the careless signal processing design that causes aliasing in the generator, which then leaked some unwanted information into the synthesis process. So it gave some unintentional positional references, which are the coordinates to the intermediate layers. That small amount of aliasing was amplified over the network and became became fixed positions, so the textures appeared glued onto the other side of your screen. And you can see that in the latent interpolation from its internal representation, Stalgen 2 holds much finer details than Alias Free Gen, though it's performing worse as the details are fixed too early before the full image is generated. So it turns out that these creepy alien looking faces would perform better at generating human faces than this well defined face, which is kind of funny. While the glued texture problem is fixed in the new paper, it just really shows how just a tiny miss can cause a major flaw in the results. I think because we were all too hyped about the brand new state of the art results, we overlooked any slight issues and tried to build directly straight on top of it. And to be honest, I only see papers that try to make Stalgen more efficient rather than trying to improve Stalgen. I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. But still, the major drawback of Alias Free Gen is that it takes longer to train, but maybe this will fix a lot of problems we see in other Stalgen 2 applications and implementations. For example, anime face generation has a lot of texture sticking problems. I really wonder how well the results will improve as more overall consistency is being considered while not having the glued effect. Hopefully, it will impact the 2D illustrations generation with a clearer 3D understanding. Other than that, this just promises very significant improvements to AI models that generate image, object, video, or even animation. But before comparing the two configurations that Alias Freegen has against Stalgen 2, let me introduce to you one of the comparison metrics called FID, short for Freshed Inception Distance. The FID metric is used to assess the quality of GANs, most notably on Stalgen and Stalgen 2. FID is obtained through a convolutional neural network called Inception V3. It was introduced back in the ImageNet Recognition Challenge, and interestingly, it took its name from the we need to go deeper meme in the movie Inception by Christopher Nolan. It essentially is a classification AI and by comparing its mean and standard deviation of the deeper nodes closer to the output that corresponds to real world stuff such as a breed of dog, we can then obtain the FID. This process can be described as mimicking how we humans see similarities in images and it's just put into some score instead. So from here, the lower the score, the better this model is at generating. Both of the configurations of alias free gen beats Stalgen 2 always by around 1 decimal places, and the most significant difference I could see from just the results are definitely from the Beaches dataset. Keep in 
mind that the FID score is obtained through quite a lot of images, so the examples you are seeing right now can be hard to tell apart its differences. But it definitely becomes more obvious if you run through some random latent space exploration, then the texture sticking is obviously old going compared to Salgen 2. If you want to learn more about this paper and how it performs anti-aliasing to make it alias free, definitely go check out their official paper, and unfortunately they have not released their codes yet, so in order to see how exactly different it is or to implement it, you may have to wait for a bit. And if you want to learn more about AI in general, today's new sponsor Skillshare actually has it for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can freely explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and have fun with your creativity. And there's this class called Data Science and Machine Learning with Python Hands-On by Frank Kane, which really caught my eye. Not only we can learn machine learning practically with Python, it's also a great starting point alongside what I usually do on my channel. So I think you guys might enjoy it. The lessons aren't that long either, so you can easily go through them during your free time. I would say this is pretty much a win-win situation as they are also providing a limited time offer of one month free premium trial instead of the usual two weeks. So even if you are done with that machine learning class, you can also check out their other amazing ad free and high quality creative classes like photography, illustrations, and video editing. The first 1000 people to use the link down in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Lastly, thank you for watching. A big shout out to Andrew and many other Patreons and members that support my work through Patreon and YouTube. If if you have any questions, feel free to join my Discord too. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.